you want a war, you're gonna get one. Now get the gun, the drugs, from my generation, I'll take the fall. The saints, and the cross the nation, that it's a sex, the God, the freaks, the fraud, the It's the 3rd of March 1997, WCW Nitro is live from Atlanta, Georgia while the WWF's Monday Night Raw show comes all the way from Berlin, Germany. The WWF were in the middle of their 1997 Express Tour, this show was taped the previous Wednesday, and the WWF has promised to crown a new European Champion this week on TV, so while Nitro from the Omni feels very familiar this week, Raw feels very, very different. WCW Nitro was also the last show to ever get held inside the Omni, by the way. The venue would get replaced with the State Farm Arena. We have a few long matches on Raw, while Nitro again tries to stuff in as many matches and promos as they possibly can, so let's not waste any more time. Welcome to Reliving the War Episode 73. On Raw, we're told that Owen Hart vs the British Bulldog will be the main event tonight and that match will be for this new European Championship. A tournament was held with the quarter and semi-final matches taking place at different shows around Germany. Although we don't get to see these tournament matches, we do get to see some rematches this week on Raw. Over on Nitro, the WCW show opened up with the NWO arriving in a Hummer limousine. The boys are clearly arriving incognito tonight. After the NWO2 sweat each other and head off into the arena, another limo pulls up, and inside is Harvey Schiller, the legit director of Turner Sports and Eric Bischoff's legit supervisor. Harvey also makes his way down to the arena, so something's gonna go down tonight on TNT. Our opening bouts then, Nitro puts on a Hugh Morris and Conan vs Mongo and Jarrett tag team match, plus a DDP vs Rick Fuller match, while Bret Hart vs Triple H takes place on Raw. Let's quickly go over the Nitro matches first, there's a promo in there as well for crying out loud, while the opening match on Raw is nothing but bell to bell action for 15 minutes. Shivani tells us the Nitro main event right away, we're gonna see Lex Luger and the Giant taking on the Steiner brothers tonight on Nitro. Luger's WCW vs NW uncensored challenge from last week is apparently being considered by the WCW executive committee also. Mongo and Jarrett worked well together during this match and they were definitely one step ahead of their opponents, but things went downhill when the public enemy showed up. Mongo and Jarrett will face Rocco Rock and Johnny Grunge at uncensored. Jarrett saves Debra and the magical briefcase, but he also accidentally smacks Big Mongo and <laughs> Mongo's bump is absolutely glorious. The horsemen lose the match, Mongo gets busted open here too, and this all leads to Double A and Ric Flair coming down to the ring to tear Double J a new one. Arn rips into Jarrett while Ric Flair says Double J is making him look bad. The horsemen give Jarrett a chair, he needs to sit on it instead of falling off. Double J promises to show his teammates and the public enemy why he's horseman material, Debra gets booed loudly when she says she doesn't manage losers, and Mongo tells Jarrett that this little slip up better have been a mistake and not intentional. Great. Diamond Dallas Page vs Rick Fuller was up next and check this out. Obviously a bunch of plants but this was pretty cool, these fans ripped off their NWO shirts to show DDP shirts underneath. Pay attention to this dude right here though. He's having fun, isn't he? The match here was very predictable though and it's only 2 minutes long. Page got the win with a diamond cutter and the crowd goes nuts. Check out the NWO guys again in the front row, absolute life and soul of the audience. Page's interview afterwards is pretty interesting, it's made official here that Dallas is gonna go after the macho man Randy Savage. After what happened last week, Page says Randy has snapped. If the macho man thinks he's such a savage, then he can snap into a diamond cutter. Gene Okerlund says afterwards that Randy Savage is gonna pay for his sins. Bret Hart tells Steve Austin to pay attention, what the hitman does to Triple H tonight, he's also gonna do to Austin at WrestleMania. The Honky Tonk Man provides commentary for this episode of Raw too, and yes, he's still looking for a protege, and yes, no one cares. 
Brett makes his entrance and he's treated like an absolute rock star in Germany. They love the hitman here. If there was ever a kid who deserved those Brett shades though, it's this kid right here. Great work. Someone throws a Bret Hart bear into the ring and Hunter kicks the pink and black shit out of it. The crowd boos while someone in the audience gets a free cuddly bear. A hip toss and a headlock takedown from the hitman starts us off here, as we see Steve Austin arriving at WWF Studios back in Connecticut. Stone Cold's gonna cut a promo later on. Hunter gets out of the headlock by pulling Bret's hair and I think Triple H got his ear caught in Bret's arm. He has to take a time out afterwards and you can see him talking to Hebner while still grabbing the side of his head. After confirming he's good to go, Hart pulls off another headlock takedown. The match is brought to the mat once again but Hunter gets up and he puts Brett down with a back elbow. His follow up elbow drop though completely misses. Brett replies with, fuck's sake another headlock takedown, that's 3 in 1 match. So I guess that's a Brett Hart headlock takedown. Hunter replies with a knee to the gut and Brett thinks about all the headlock takedowns he's gonna do when he gets back up. We go to commercial break and Hunter maintains control when we come back. Brett takes a beating on the mat before Hunter rams the hitman into the ring post shoulder first. An armbar takedown from Hunter puts Brett on the canvas and as Hunter applies an armbar, we get some big earth shattering news. Oh yeah, this Friday night at 8, 7 central right here on USA. It's uh, the Terminator starring- Wanna uh, just watch the Terminator with me and we can talk about that instead? Hunter continues to work over the arm and the crowd rally behind the hitman. Hunter hits a knee strike when both men get back to their feet as the commentary team hype up the submission match at Wrestlemania. And yeah, I'm going to cover this whole Wrestlemania event too on the channel. Brett wakes up and Hunter ends up taking a superplex. We then see the side Russian leg sweep, the backbreaker, the second rope elbow drop. All this only gets Brett a two count. The hitman hits Hunter with a smooth suplex but Hunter tries to turn it around with an Irish whip reversal. Triple H goes for a pedigree. Brett counters with a slingshot. And the match ends when Hunter takes the flare corner bump and he ends up in the tree of woe. Brett lays in a ton of kicks and the referee tries to break things up. Hart shoves Art Hebner down to the mat and the referee disqualifies Hart. China then hits the ring, keep in mind she still didn't have a name at this point, and she challenges Brett to a fight. Officials hit the ring to escort China away, but it's made clear afterwards that China and Helmsley are definitely working together. Hunter leaves with China after the match. A solid opener here from Monday Night Raw. Vader took on Rocky Maivia next on Raw, while Nitro put on another two matches, Rey Mendoza Jr vs Juventud Guerrera and Dean Malenko vs Mike Anus. Gonna breeze over the Nitro stuff here as we have more fun stuff to look at a bit later, but here's a few high spots from the Guerrera match. Guerrera kicked Mendoza so hard that he knocked his tongue out of his mouth for a second. This lady here wearing the giant shirt gives us the perfect reaction, while this lady here is like, whoa, back the fuck up homeboy. We saw this leg drop from Hoovy and also this dive from one side of the apron to the other. I like how Guerrera gave Mendoza the finger afterwards. Guerrero ended up getting the win with a 450 splash. Afterwards, Jimmy Hart, Jackie and Kevin Sullivan take over the commentary desk. It's great when the NWO do this kind of thing, but Sullivan really comes across as a tryhard. It's implied here that after the San Francisco street fight at Super Bowl, Jackie jumped into Benoit's ambulance and she beat Benoit and Nancy up. I'm not sure if this was intentional sarcasm because Kevin Sullivan just doesn't make sense at the best of times. Jackie also says she wants to face a man at the next pay per view but that man remains unnamed. She does say she'd take on Hogan, Savage or Luger but that of course didn't happen. It was going to be Disco Inferno who faced Jackie in her first WCW match but Disco wasn't too hot on the idea, resulting in Glenn Gilberti almost joining the WWF to become Honky Tonk Man's protege. Jackie wouldn't face anyone in Uncensored by the way and I'm not sure if this was due to guys refusing to lose to her, but once Disco agreed to stay with WCW and once he healed up from an injury, he was still put in a match with Jackie on pay per view and he lost the match. We'll get to all that soon enough though. This promo wraps up with Jimmy Hart going all out. He only went and got himself a too legit to quit jacket, the absolute madman. Because we too legit to quit! Just too legit to quit! Because we too legit to quit! Too legit to quit! Too legit! Too legit to quit! Dean Malenko defeated Mike Anus by pinfall and afterwards Dean said this is a new and improved Dean Malenko. 
The Iceman said he's a great wrestler, a great mat technician, but Dean is going to excel at running through guys like Eddie Guerrero and anyone else who steps in his way. Dean says last week was just a little taste, Malenko is ready to kick Guerrero all around the ring, and just before Nitro moves on, Tony Schiavone lets us know that Eddie Guerrero will be in action a little later on. We'll come back to this in a moment because Malenko also reappears on Nitro. Over on Raw we have Vader vs Rocky Maivia. Vader was able to beat this job guy in the European Championship Tournament, so the WWF booked a rematch for the IC title. If and when Vader wins, Rock will drop the gold and then fulfil his destiny in the unemployment line. The Steve Austin studio interview was supposed to take place beforehand, but Stone Cold was off taking a shit. Not joking by the way, and no, I didn't add any sound effects here. Earlier on, and we expect to talk with well, I guess we have a Something that stood out about this match on Raw was how easy Vader was taking it on my Vea. We have seen the big man destroy guys with those big forearms, but Vader definitely took care of Rocky here, almost to the detriment of the match. Not a lot to say here really, it went back and forth with neither man really taking control, but it did have a few good moments such as this counter hip toss from my Vea. Mankind came down to the ringside area and he hit Rocky with the urn. This leads to Rocky winning via disqualification and Vader getting pissed off. The IC champ takes a beating inside the ring afterwards so I'm not sure who this match was supposed to benefit, both competitors come out looking pretty bad. Following this matchup we got a recap of the ECW invasion from last week, Jerry Lawler and Paul E are gonna call into Raw during the next match. We have Flash Funk vs The Sultan on Raw while Eric Bischoff cuts a promo on Nitro, Ultimo Dragon also takes on Eddie Guerrero. Eric Bischoff comes out and he thanks Lex Luger, even though Lex can't book matches, Eric accepts the uncensored main event that Luger let out last week. More confusion about the match stipulation is then created when Bischoff says the NWO will put their belts on the line against the future of WCW, ok then. Keep this all in mind because you're going to get way more confused about this uncensored main event as the show progresses. As Eric Bischoff begins patting himself on the back, Harvey Schiller walks out and Bischoff shits himself. Mean Gene reminds Bischoff that Harvey is Eric's boss and Eric sarcastically says that he knows that. Schiller wants to know why Eric is running around firing referees and stripping wrestlers of their championship belts. And Harvey wants to know if Eric thinks he's allowed to do such things just because he has a Turner contract. When Eric says yes he can do these things with his own free will, Harvey announces that Eric is suspended and Eric is not allowed to sign any further talent. Dr Schiller doesn't want Eric to pick up a phone, he doesn't want to hear any rumours of Eric being in the men's restrooms because, you know, that must be Eric's favourite place to hang out or something, I don't know. But Eric Bischoff has been suspended and Eric Bischoff has to pack his bags. This gets a great crowd response and Harvey Schiller instantly became a fan favourite after this big announcement. The commentators struggled to focus on the Guerrero vs Dragon match that followed. The crowd chanted USA and Guerrero joined in, almost as if to say hey I'm actually from the USA too. What's surprising here is that Eddie for the first time on WCW Nitro cheated to win. Eddie used the ropes for leverage during a cover, very interesting. After the match Eddie says that he made a mistake at Super Brawl during Malenko's match and he tried to apologise, but judging by Dean's actions last week and his promo earlier on, it seems that Eddie saying sorry to Dean is falling on deaf ears. Out comes Malenko and Mean Gene then makes an announcement, Malenko vs Guerrero was booked for uncensored and Eddie's US title will be on the line. Dean says he won't let Guerrero deceive the fans, Malenko has been up and down the road with Eddie and he knows what Eddie is all about. Dean says he knows Guerrero's true colours, at one point Malenko respected his upcoming uncensored opponent but that respect has been lost. Eddie starts screaming at Malenko but Mean Gene ends the interview. Eddie didn't get a chance to defend himself here but judging by Dean's comments and looking at how Eddie won his match against Dragon, Maybe Eddie wasn't the squeaky clean babyface we all thought he was. Jerry Lawler calls into Raw during Flash Funk and the Sultan's entrances. Apparently the King had some passport problems and he couldn't make it to Germany. The King heard some rumours that Paulie Dangerously will be at Raw again next week in Worcester. 
Lawler says the WWF need ECW like Michael Jordan needs head and shoulders. And if ECW show up next week, then Jerry Lawler promises a war on Monday night. During the match, Paul E phoned in and he said the WWF mustn't think too highly of Jerry Lawler saying the company didn't even buy him a plane ticket to Berlin. Paul says he and ECW attended Raw last week to showcase their roster and plug their upcoming first ever pay-per-view. Vince McMahon thanks Paul for coming over and Paul thanks McMahon for the opportunity. And Paul E wraps it up by saying ECW once again accepts Jerry Lawler's challenge and ECW could very well show up to Raw next week. Funk hits a moonsault towards the end of the match but he can't put Sultan away. Sultan counters a head scissors attempt with this right here. Didn't look too great did it? And the match ended with Flash Funk getting humbled with a camel clutch. Kinda shocking that Funk lost to the Sultan here after the good work he's put in since his debut. And even more shocking is the fact that Sultan would get an IC title shot at WrestleMania 13 in a few weeks time. The character has done absolutely nothing noteworthy since debuting. After the match, Psycho Sid, who puts his WWF title on the line against Mankind tonight, says that he heard Mankind was talking German earlier on, but instead of trying to learn a new language, Mankind should have been focusing on the task at hand. It's kick or be kicking guys, Mankind will become another victim on Sid's path to WrestleMania and his big match against The Undertaker. Quick question though, why is Sid so red here? Ahmed Johnson cuts a promo next while Michael Wall Street does battle with Scotty Riggs on Nitro. Looking up this event in Berlin and this Raw taping, Ahmed actually had a match against Leif Cassidy and it was left off the Raw broadcast. The match was, however, included in the Superstar show later in the week. A very brief promo thankfully, our guy here speaks German of course and he wants to know if Ahmed accepts the street fight against Farouk at WrestleMania 13. Ahmed says he accepts but he isn't coming alone. He's made that mistake a few times already so Ahmed will bring some friends along to WrestleMania to take care of the nation. Ahmed says he's gonna take Farouk down for the people and then he leads another you're going down chant as the German audience chants along. This never caught on no matter how many times Johnson and the WWF tried, it's almost as bad as too legit to quit. Ahmed's surprise friends were then pretty much spoiled when a replay from Shotgun Saturday Night aired. The Legion of Doom talked about showing up at WrestleMania and how the Nation of Domination know nothing about the streets. The streets of Chicago belong to the Road Warriors and it just so happens that Mania 13 is also being held in Chicago. Subtlety has never been the WWF's strong point has it? Over on Nitro, Scotty Riggs went to battle with Michael Wall Street and man, Scotty Riggs has been left with nothing since Buff joined the NWO. All he has is that American Males theme song and as good as it is, it isn't much. Wall Street pulled off two chin locks here guys, so close but he knows I'm watching. This one's a fine example of what I was talking about a few weeks ago about having to listen to commentary to follow WCW storylines. So get this, it's announced here during a Scotty Riggs vs Wall Street match that the WCW executive committee has accepted Luger's match and that WCW vs NWO tag match will happen at Uncensored. However, the committee has also invited Piper to get involved and Roddy Piper can also form a team. This is like a very important announcement and why it's pissed away in this match and not incorporated into a promo is really weird. Why didn't Schiller announce it earlier on? I don't know. The match ends with Bagwell interfering and Riggs wins via disqualification. Riggs dodges a double clothesline and he threatens to hit Buff with a chair, but Bagwell gets out of the ring. While all this was going on, it's announced that Roddy Piper is actually in the building and he's coming out of the ring next. It almost feels like Piper was running late and they only announced all this nonsense once they knew he was in the area. And look, I get it, they like to surprise folks who watch Nitro, but this feels very messy and a pretty poor way of setting up the uncensored main event. Alright, so we're gonna go in depth with these next parts on Raw and Nitro. Psycho Sid vs Mankind and the Roddy Piper segment on Nitro, you're gonna love this stuff, trust me. Let's watch the Psycho Sid match first. We see that footage of Mankind speaking German before the entrances, but those sick language skills won't get you too far inside the ring with Psycho Sid. The WWF Champion destroys Foley inside the ring and Mankind is forced to take a timeout on the outside. 
Sid follows his opponent and Mankind takes a boot to the face. Mankind briefly takes control as Vince McMahon says the WrestleMania main event could end up being The Undertaker vs Mankind if Foley can win this thing, but it doesn't take long for Sid to turn things around again. The action gets back inside the ring and… that's a chin lock isn't it? We have went for weeks without a single chin lock being applied and today's episode is a chin lock party, we haven't even got to the Bulldogs match yet either. Sid pulls off an armbar takedown that looked, well it looked like a Sid armbar takedown, and we go to Steve Austin via split screen, Stone Cold has a nice t-shirt on there, I wonder if fans would be interested in buying that piece of merch. McMahon says they tried to get Austin's thoughts earlier on but he was away from his chair, remember Austin was gone taking a shit, and Stone Cold says he sat in an airplane seat right next to the restrooms. He had a stale sandwich for lunch but that's not what made Stone Cold sick. What made Stone Cold sick was hearing Bret Hart crying and complaining on WWF television. This makes Steve Austin violently ill to his stomach. Stone Cold says he was indeed throwing up everywhere but it goes even beyond that. So Austin was indeed having a dump earlier on and it's all thanks to Bret Hart's complaining. This is absolutely brilliant. We're gonna get more Steve Austin a little later on but back to the match, Mankind hits an apron leg drop on Big Sid, he then hits Sid with an elbow strike on the outside and a few running punches back inside the ring keep the WWF champion stunned. Sid then completely shakes off all the damage Mankind caused by hitting some of those big clubbing blows. The crowd has gone pretty quiet here and it's a stark contrast when compared to the Hart vs Helmsley opening match. Things heat up when we get back from commercial break, Sid just completely shoves Mankind out of the ring and Foley falls down hard. Another shove on the outside sees Mick hitting his back on the ring post and Foley also takes a side suplex here. Foley replies with a neck breaker over the ropes and here's something you don't see too often, Mick Foley performing a second rope leg drop. That's a chin lock right there from Mankind folks, Sid gets back up and Mankind ducks a clothesline, leading to the mandible claw getting applied. Mankind manages to bring it all the way down to the mat but Sid powers out, he stands up and he just takes the claw out of his mouth like it's nothing at all. Mankind decides to try a sleeper hold and Sid breaks it by dropping all his body weight on top of Mrs Foley's baby boy. Eventually Paul Bear gets on the apron and Mankind accidentally hits his manager. This results in Mankind taking a choke slam, but Foley manages to kick out it too. Only one thing left to do then, Mankind takes a powerbomb from Sid and just look at the impact here, jeez. Sid wins the match and they did get the crowd back into it during the last few minutes of the match. A slow starter for sure but it does pick up towards the end. <laughs> right, this Roddy Piper stuff. This is the longest part of Nitro by the way, Piper comes out and after ripping into Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage, he says he's gonna put together a family tonight, a team to take on the NWO. There's no explanation as to why Piper's putting together a team. Now we were told earlier on that the WCW executive committee said that Piper can get involved in the uncensored match, but the fans in attendance didn't hear this announcement and nobody really has a clue what's going on. Piper says there's 6 complete randoms standing backstage, he's gonna fight each guy one at a time and the fans will then decide who joins team Piper. Piper says this team will be his third family, he has a family at home, the fans are his second family and it's gonna be the fans who decide his third family. Now there's a wealth of talent backstage and I know it doesn't make sense for WCW guys to join Team Piper because, well, there's already a Team WCW involved in Uncensored, but fuck me, who is this guy? He gets in the ring and they try to make it look like a shoot fight and Piper makes the guy top out with a Kimura. Yes, Roddy Piper pulling off Kimuras on WCW Nitro. Piper wants to know if this guy should get a thumbs up and seeing as Piper just, you know, embarrassed the guy on live TV, the fans give it a thumbs down and our shoot fighting friend doesn't make the cut. Next out is Luther Reigns and a pair of Daisy Dukes, not even joking. Piper puts him in the sleeper and the crowd give another thumbs down. Some fans have no idea what's going on and they just mimic whatever Piper's doing. The next guy that comes out gets jumped by another guy wearing boxing gloves and his underwear. Why are the competitors wearing less and less clothing? Ok, so let's pause for a minute, this guy is called Craig Molly and doing some digging online brings us to an IMDB page where Molly, strangely enough, 
was involved in a ton of Roddy Piper movies. Craig is also the guy who showed up behind Piper during Roddy's debut at Halloween Havoc and he also showed up at the end of Starcade. Some say Craig was Piper's bodyguard, some say he carried Piper's luggage around, some say he was out of work and Piper was just doing him a favour. Who knows what their relationship was. But if Roddy Piper was the Hulk Hogan, then Craig Molly would be the booty man. Craig isn't given a name here, he has a boxing match with Piper and Piper goes down a few times. Piper gives as good as he gets though and the crowd start booing when this thing goes on way too long. Piper could do no wrong in WCW just a few weeks back but the audience doesn't like this at all and you can't blame them either. Piper expects the audience to give a thumbs up here but they boo this guy relentlessly. This thing's falling apart before our very eyes. Piper says the fans are being too harsh, they have another scuffle, and it looks like Craig is now a part of Team Piper even though the crowd booed the shit out of him. A kickboxing hobo comes out next and Piper doesn't even let the crowd decide. This guy beats up Piper for a while and Piper lets him join his sacred family. The hobo is actually an actor and a well versed stuntman and stunt coordinator. He has stunt credits in movies such as Suicide Squad, Godzilla 2014 and Boondock Saints. His name is Leighton Morrison but back here in 1997 nobody cared. Out next is someone we actually know, it's John Tenta. Tony Schiavone reminds us that Tenta had a sumo career before getting into pro wrestling so Piper ends up picking a sumo guy, a kickboxer and a boxer. All three men start fighting with each other, Piper likes what he sees, he gives all three men a slap and he sends a message to Hulk Hogan. NWO stands for no way out. This is great for a laugh but nothing more, a horrifically bad segment on Nitro. And then you have the audience in attendance who knows nothing about the uncensored announcements, so Piper's involvement is a complete mystery to fans in the Omni, it's just so bad. We'd have to once again rely on the commentary team to clear up any confusion regarding the uncensored main event, but it doesn't get cleared up until WCW Saturday night later in the week. Steve Austin cuts a promo on Raw while JL takes on Rey Mysterio on Nitro. Thank god for Steve Austin. After that Nitro stuff I was almost about to tap out and cancel this series. After a replay gets shown of Steve Austin costing Brett the WWF title a few weeks back, Steve says the only regret he has about that night is that he didn't hit Brett harder with the chair. Austin says Brett still complains about being screwed but Stone Cold's been getting screwed for the last 7 years. Shawn Michaels gets a music video when he gets the flu and there's a big song and dance for the heartbreak kid but when Steve Austin went into the final four match with a blown out knee, nothing was mentioned about it. Steve says no one else could have worked that final four match with only one leg and he also says that he isn't making fun of one legged people, he's just making a point. As for the submission match at Wrestlemania, it's a load of bull to Steve Austin, seeing as Brett's supposed to be the submission expert but that's okay. Steve will still beat the hell out of Bret Hart and just like Ken Shamrock said last week, there's no quit in Stone Cold, Austin will never say he submits and Austin will never give up. Austin wraps up another excellent promo by saying this. Treat me like a dog and you expect me to smile? You remind me of a jackass. JL vs Rey Mysterio on Nitro is another match without consequence so there's not much point going in depth here. I thought the Guerrero vs Mendoza match was actually better. Rey got the win with a west coast pop. During the match Prince Ikea cut a promo where he said he'd give Rey Mysterio another shot at the TV title it uncensored, it can't be any worse than their previous pay per view match. I know I mentioned these guys earlier on but this chap here in the audience, the N in the NWO, he's so distracting with those glasses but I love his commitment. Medusa then cut a promo and she says she came to WCW while trashing a world class championship belt in order to open up women's wrestling and make a difference. The problem now is that Medusa has been set dormant and she's been given nothing to do. Remember that women's title tournament back in November? I know that you remember it, I remember it, but it looks like WCW completely forgot about it. Medusa says she's doing nothing at the moment because Eric Bischoff is too busy with the new world order. Medusa says to her the NWO stands for the new women's organisation. And Medusa also remembers there's a women's championship when she says that she's the number one contender for the belt. 
Medusa says that Luna Vachon is running around backstage saying that she's the number one contender and then Luna comes out and she attacks Medusa. This would have been better if Medusa didn't mention Luna before the attack. Luna beats Medusa up, she tries to DDT her on the floor but Medusa won't let go of the guardrail. And yeah, Luna Vachon is now part of WCW, let's see if this revitalizes the women's division a little. Nitro ends with an NWO promo in the Steiners vs Lex Luger in the Giant, while Owen Hart battles the British Bulldog on Raw. Let's look at Nitro first and we'll save the Owen vs Bulldog match for last. The New World Order come to the ring and there he is, the man called Sting, now part of the NWO. Also, there's Eric Bischoff, wasn't he just suspended earlier in the show? Well, Eric explains this away by saying that he's friends with Ted Turner and Harvey can't get rid of Bischoff that easily. Hogan tells Harvey to take a hike, so that's that I guess. Why didn't they get one of the better promos of the show? Hogan says he and the NWO just watched Piper fight a bunch of fans tonight, and if that's going to be Piper's team then it would be foolish to bet against the New World Order. Savage says that Hulk Hogan punked Roddy Piper twice, if Piper compares his career to that of the Macho Man then the Hot Rod would find out that he's way behind. And Savage even says that Elizabeth could beat up Roddy Piper. This promo's going nowhere at all. Hogan sort of clears things up when he alludes to Team Piper and Team WCW taking on Team NWO at Uncensored. Kevin Nash says the NWO are just too sweet, and that's it really. I think these guys were in the ring to show off Sting in the NWO, and I think it was also done to show that Sting wasn't really getting involved with the NWO's usual self serving promos, he just stood there and he listened to the whole thing. The Steiners vs Lex Luger match was up next and in regards to the uncensored main event, Tony Schiavone says contracts need to be signed and the WCW committee need to look over the match, so it's still not official. It's truly baffling that Roddy Piper would form a team of nobodies while, in storyline, the WCW vs Piper vs NWO match wasn't even made official but well, this has been one messy episode of Nitro. Luger and Rick Steiner starts us off here, Lex brings Rick to the ropes and to the turnbuckles after the initial lockups, but Rick fires back with a kick to the midsection and a big right hand. Luger gets a boot up in the corner and he hits a clothesline, Rick comes back with his overhead scoop power slam before tagging in Scott, and then we see a belly to belly suplex, it looks like that car accident didn't do too much damage to the Steiner brothers. Scott hits a double underhook powerbomb and Lex comes back with a power slam, it looked pretty bad as you can see right here. In comes the giant and Scott takes a big boot, the giant maintains control until Rick gets a blind tag and this leads to Rick and Scott pulling off a double suplex. The competitors have this awkward time wasting argument before the NWO show up. Sting walks down the entranceway all alone while Hogan and the boys come through the audience, eventually surrounding the ring and stopping the match. Piper and his group of merry men then hit the ring to back up the baby faces. Sting watches on as a massive brawl breaks out in the middle of the ring, and Nitro then goes off the air. Yep, that's it, that, that's how it ended. Bulldog vs Owen then, this one has been building up for quite a while and the WWF decided to settle the score while also adding a new championship belt to the mix. Bulldog brings Owen to the corner to start it off but we get a clean break. We can tell that Bulldog is motivated tonight when he pulls off a headstand wrist lock counter and Owen replies by doing his version. Not to be outdone, Davey shows that it's actually he who is too legit to quit and well, breakdancing wrist lock counters. This gets a great pop from the Berlin audience. Davey then gets whipped to the ropes, he cartwheels out of a monkey flip, who is this man and what have they done with the real British Bulldog? Owen performs a hip toss, Davey kicks Owen away, and we come to a stalemate as the crowd show their appreciation. Fantastic work here. The two go back at it and we see this, Owen uses the top rope to flip his whole body and he performs a hip toss afterwards. Davey replies with a power bomb before Owen takes a slingshot and the king of hearts goes over the top rope. Showboating Davy Boy Smith then makes an appearance as Owen recovers on the outside, and already the WWF has shown fans that this is the wrestling show this week, not Monday Nitro and all that NWO stuff. 
Davy opens the ropes for Hart and this gets another round of applause. Owen then goes up and over and he performs a roll up but Davy kicks out. We see an arm drag that's got a lot of snap before Davy applies an arm bar. Owen again tries to go over Davy's head when both men get back to their feet but Davy knew it was coming and Owen takes a slam. All the impact was on Owen's arm. We come back from commercial break and Davy performs a crucifix pin, only scoring a two count. Owen then counters a suplex but he misses a follow up insecurity attempt. Davy and Owen just know each other all too well. Davy then performs a surfboard, something we don't see all that often from the bulldog. And then we see a monkey flip that sends Owen to the other side of the ring. Owen then dumps Davy to the outside and then he holds the ropes open for Davy, returning the favour from earlier on. The match continues on, we see a headlock takedown from Davy, and when both men get back up, Owen feigns a knee injury. Davy knows his partner is up to no good so Owen quickly takes advantage and the crowd begins to boo for the first time. Bulldog breaks a sharpshooter attempt next and it looks like the good sportsmanship has now been thrown out the window. Owen maintains the advantage with a spinning wheel kick and a backbreaker. Davy gets thrown into the turnbuckles hard and Owen celebrates afterwards. The King of Hearts follows up with the ultimate humiliation as Davy takes a chin lock and afterwards Davy takes a knee to the gut. Bulldog then gets kicked out of the ring but he comes back in with a sunset flip. Owen kicks out and chin lock number 2, what if Owen pulls off 3 chin locks here? We come back from a commercial break and Owen hits a belly to belly suplex. Owen then applies a camel clutch and I know it's nearly a chin lock but we can't count it. Davy gets out with an electric chair drop and the fall doesn't look very smooth at all. Owen tries to get a cheap victory afterwards but Davy kicks out. Owen lands an elbow drop and then Owen Hart chin lock. The fact that three chin locks are in a Davy Boy Smith match and it wasn't Davy who pulled off a single one fills me with so much joy. Match of the year contender. Owen tries a superplex but Davy counters it, only getting a two count. Davy fires back with an ultimate warrior-esque jumping clothesline and the crowd goes nuts when Davy follows it up with a few more clotheslines. Davy keeps the pressure on with a suplex, an Irish whip into the corner and Davy also smashes Owen's little rocket on the top rope. Owen fires back with a German suplex in Germany but Davy kicks out. Owen finds himself lifted in the air for a running power slam but check out this counter right here. <laughs> Owen hits an enziguri, he then applies the sharpshooter and the crowd think it's all over but Davy makes it to the ropes. Davy then counters a pile driver attempt with his running power slam and somehow Owen hard kicks out of Davy's finisher. Davy can't believe it, he starts arguing with the referee, Owen tries to steal it with a victory roll but Davy counters. 1-2-3, the bulldog wins the match. He becomes the first ever European champion and what a main event this was. Davy celebrates with his new title belt. Owen shakes his hand and there's a moment where Owen maybe wants to keep the belt for himself but Davy takes it away. And the WWF give us a very satisfactory end to Monday Night Raw this week. I absolutely love this match. Go out of your way to check it out. Raw wins this week's episode of Reliving the War. I liked the longer matches. Owen vs Davy was excellent. And Nitro, well, I have no idea what happened on Nitro this week even though I just watched the whole show. Here's how I would have scored it using the old scoring system. And with this victory, Raw continues to catch up to Nitro slowly but surely. Raw has 28 points, Nitro has 35 points, and we have had 10 ties. In the television ratings, Nitro got the win with a 3.4. Raw got a 1.9 rating which was totally criminal seeing as Raw, in my opinion, was leagues better than Nitro on this week. Nitro looks pretty different next week, it's a special spring break episode from Panama City Beach, Florida. And I'm gonna be honest, I love these spring break Nitros, they look so good on TV. Over on Raw though... Owen Hart and Davy Boy Smith ended an era this week with their incredible European title match. Next week though, we finally step into the war zone for Raw is War. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you all next week.